You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. You are listening to the number one horse podcast in the world. Here's your entertaining look at the horse world and the people in it. Good Monday morning, everybody. I am Glenn Geek in Ocala, Florida. And I'm Jamie Jennings, and I'm in Norman, Oklahoma. You're listening to Horses in the Morning on the Horse Radio Network for Monday, November 20th, episode 3309. I have good news and bad news for you on this Monday morning. First, the bad. It's Monday. But the good news is really good. Jamie and Glenn are here to guide you through another week filled with horse talk and a whole lot of fun. Welcome to Horses in the Morning. It's a lot going on for your week, buddy. Yeah, but uh, you know what? I'm in, we're in pretty good shape, so I'm not I'm not as stressed as usual about Radiothon time. But Jamie's going to tell us all about her trip to New York City to see the premiere of The Cowboy and the Queen. I can't wait. I haven't really talked to her about it either, so I need to find out what's going on. I know everybody's waiting to hear about it. Nick Larkin <laughs> is an inventor. And I didn't know something else about Nick Larkin till right before the <laughs> show. <laughs> you know Nick Larkin. I do. He's my old coach. And I just logged on to look at the show notes, and Nick Larkin is joining us to talk about cross-country equitation. Um, it's something that he's going to come up with. And Nick is, he was the first winner of the Rolex four star when it was a four star and him, him and his horse red off the track thoroughbred. And I'm so excited to have him on. Isn't he from Australia, New Zealand? One of those two New Zealand. Yeah. And he's, um, he was also the judge at the makeover and <clears throat> the thoroughbred makeover when I went up to show jumping and I was like, these are too big. And I look over and he's the judge and I haven't seen him in 10 years. And I was like, Nick, these are way too big. Oh my God. I can't jump these on this horse. And then I went out and nailed it. So whatever. It's cool. <laughs> Who knew when I saw the lineup this morning that you knew him? That's cool. Was I that know. in Kentucky when you lived there? Yeah, yeah, he was my coach when I was in Kentucky, and he, I mean, so he lives south of Lexington, so he came up to the barn I was at and taught lessons, and yeah, and I had this little loco off the track thoroughbred that, you know, he helped me manage and get through competing, and yeah, I'm so super excited. I, I, I love him. He has had racehorses back then, and I took some of his racehorses to the track with his wife, and it was just awesome. Well, we are excited to announce, too, that there's going to be a World Equestrian Games again after a slight time off. After uh, it happened in 2018, we didn't see one, but they have just accepted, the FEI has just accepted Aachen in Germany for a World Equestrian Games that's going to include jumping, dressage, paradressage, eventing, driving, and vaulting all in one place. It's going to be August the 10th through the 23rd of 2026, and they're going to do endurance in Saudi Arabia, which will make all the endurance riders mad. But there will be endurance in Saudi Arabia a little later that year. But it's very exciting. It's coming back. As you know, Samantha Clark and I, we did the 2010 uh, World Equestrian Games show back uh, 2008 to 2010, and then we did 2016 to 2018 for the one that was at Tryon. So I wrote to Samantha this morning and I say, hey, World of Question Games coming back, but she hasn't responded yet. So maybe... uh, She's probably blocked you. Yeah, she's tired of working with me. But uh, they in 2006, 20 years uh, before 2026, Aachen hosted the fifth edition of the World of Question Games, and they had over 576,000 spectators back in 2006. So Aachen is set up. This is, you know, I haven't been there, but from all the pictures I've seen, it's a remarkable place. And maybe, maybe we'll finally get to a World Equestrian Games overseas. I've been to two now, but uh, never one overseas. So it's coming back. I don't know if we're coming back. Samantha and I haven't talked to her yet, but uh, it's coming back for sure. Let's do some daily winnies. We have three auditor birthdays today, Jessica Quinn, Kayla Mosher, and Steph Seidel. And we have a brand new auditor, Jamie. Angie Wilson joined the pack in the last week. Do you know what's really cool about Angie Wilson being an auditor? What? She is one of the ones who came to my clinic. Oh, really? 
with the other two auditors. So she must have got strong armed into doing it. <laughs> Hi, Angie. <laughs> Hi, Angie. Well, we thank you, Angie, for joining the auditor group. We really appreciate your support. And apparently, Jamie knows everybody I'm going to talk about on the Today's show. Today's the day. <laughs> to give my daily winnie to the roberts slash lauks family what an awesome experience that i had um i would also like to give a daily winnie to leah and electra because they are our auditors who came to the movie premiere just an awesome time but the D- D- debbie lauks is tireless tireless she is monty's daughter and she just worked so hard to protect his legacy and and see it going forward. And this documentary that they put together is unbelievable. And I'm just so proud of everybody involved. It was just really cool to watch. Well, I want to ask you all about that. So your trip to New York, you got, first of all, you got to hang out with a couple of our auditors. Yes, I did. So um, I I arrived on Wednesday after right around lunchtime. Uh, and so I met Electra for lunch and we walked around New York and we were on the we saw the Brooklyn Bridge. We had lunch right out there. It just was really, really fun. She lives um, there right in town. She lives in, I think, Brooklyn. So just took a train right over. I don't know how people get around. I was just like, <laughs> just Uber. I'm just gonna I know I have this app because apparently taking the tr- the subway is cheaper. But I, I was like, I don't I don't understand any of this. And it's all in English. Even, and I still didn't understand. You know, it. when I look at those maps, because I'm not a city boy, when I look at those maps, I just I look at them and go, I have no idea. I just no idea. Well, the New York subway map, it's like you look at the map and there's like four dots and then you have to go on the dots that go up and down and then the dots that go left and right and then get out and go six dots to there. I'm like, nope, I'm done. <laughs> I'll pay seven extra dollars to have somebody That's just drive did. me there. That's what we've done in every city. We've, I don't think I've ever been in the subway <laughs> because of that. It's yeah, it's terrifying. I mean, I did the subways like in Rome, you like because you have to. That's just the way it is, and that is so confusing. And I was like, I feel like I'm in uh, underground in Europe, and nobody speaks my language. Like, <laughs> well, I don't know. your outfit fit, not being oh. savvy to the subways. It really did. It did. It was so funny because the um, they had the premiere on, let's see, well, Thursday day. It was really cool. I got to go to an art exhibit with Pat and Debbie. And, dude, I'm sorry. Walking around New York is exhausting, right? So, like, you're always – it's always farther than it says. You're always getting lost. And there's Debbie and I walking down the street. And do you know what? We're trying to – we're trying to keep up with Pat, Who's like 87, 88 years old, and she is like New York style. For those that don't know, that's Monty's wife, Pat Roberts. Oh my God, she's amazing. Like, I hope I have half the energy as her tomorrow. You know, like, I mean, she's amazing. She's amazing. So we're trying to keep up with her. We go to art exhibit. We got went to lunch, like had a great time and then went and got dressed for the premiere. And the, the outfit is either British, um, attire, which I don't know what that is, um, or something that looks sort of like Queenie, you know? Yeah. And yeah, well, so many people were wearing tiaras and stuff. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. People did dress up, but I was like, that kind of attire requires heels and I'm not (laughs) rocking the heels twice in one year. So, um, I put on the cowboy boots and went to the local, the store, you know, I shamed myself pretty bad about this, actually. I went to the store called The Boot Barn. Which is all I, over the country, actually. We have one is here. It re- yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Okay, so so it's not shabby. You know, like, I went no, to The no, Boot it's Barn. A, it's a chain, actually. And I found these jeans, and they were, like, the most expensive jeans in the store. And I was like, I just don't, like, I might as well take a loan out for these jeans, right? And so I get there, and they're, like... Four feet too long. They only had like one of my size, but it was for like really tall people. So I was like, I'm just going to roll them up, I guess. And Electra's like, this is New York. Okay. What you do is you're going to take it to the, to the tailor, right? I was like, nobody's going to like hem my pants in a day in New York. They do. I walked out of the hotel. There was like a cleaners and I was like, hi, I need these hemmed. It was like, when would you like them back? I was like, 
three o'clock. He's like, okay. <laughs> so I got these pants. Yeah, that him. doesn't happen in Oklahoma. <laughs> no, no, not at all. And so I get these pants him. I come back and I was telling Debbie, I was like, Ugh, I've never spent this much on jeans in my life. And she was like, well, I have they work. And I was like, yeah, they better. They were $70. And she <laughs> laughed at me. And I was like, Oh, this is Oklahoma prices for fashion versus California prices or New York prices. Apparently, seventy dollars for jeans is not that much, but it like stung. I don't. I've never paid seventy dollars for jeans. I mean, thank you. Yeah. I but you like got bedaz- bedazzled jeans. jeans. I mean, you yeah. were looking very rodeo. They were like they have this their bell bottoms and they have this cool stitching down the side. Your jacket and then- was cool too. Your remember I joked with you. Oh, you got to get a fringe jacket. You did. I did. Yeah. Sometimes I listen to you. Some Most times not. But yeah, I got you this cool great. fringe jacket and it was like the jacket was, I was like, this jacket's cheaper than the jeans. It was like $68 for the jacket. So I'm like, I'm out tons of money. So then I'm trying to find a shirt. Glenn, you're going to love this. I'm trying to find a shirt that went underneath the jacket that complemented the jeans. And I already know I'm going to wear my brown boots. And so I'm looking around, I'm like, boot barn. I'm like, I am not spending $50 on a shirt. I just, that's a enough money. I don't buy clothes. We buy riding clothes. You know, I don't think twice about spending $80 on a pair of riding pants, but whatever. No. I can't do this. So then 90% like, of our listeners and, and our hosts shop at Goodwill's for the regular clothes. Well, right. let me tell you, I was like, that's enough. So oh, I, no. I was, I just walked out and I was like, that's a cool. And then do you know what is next door to the boot barn? Goodwill? Ross. Oh, there you go. $12 Ross for, for sure. less. So I went in and I got a shirt for $6. <laughs> Actually, I couldn't decide on the color, so I got three. <laughs> and it was like $18 for three shirts that I'll wear all of them again. And so, yeah, that's the that's me. Um, yeah, I thought I was crazy spending on jeans for $70 and everybody laughed at me. Apparently, I'm cheap when it comes to buying clothes. Sorry. I just I just have never spent $70 on a pair of jeans. It stung. Um, I barely have spent good. $150 on a suit. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Goodwill. You yeah, got right. uh, you know, I used to wait for the, the sales to come up at JCPenney to buy the suits when I actually had to wear them. But you were missing the cowboy hat. We really need to get you a cowboy hat. A real cowboy uh, hat. I have a hard time with cowboy hats. It just, I tried on a couple and it's just not, it I just doesn't work. I don't think you found one that fit yet either. I you need know. like one that's like a taco you need on a my custom head. custom fit cowboy hat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll have to do that. Sure. Next time we're in Dallas together, we'll, we'll go shop and I'll buy you a really good cowboy hat. Yeah. Okay. Well. I can't, you know, so, I have a hard right, time well, with brand let, hats like that because your voice comes back to your ears. Is that weird? <laughs> that is kind of like weird. When you talk, it kind of hits the bottom of the hat and it like echoes the back The only in time your head. I wear them, obviously, is at conferences where people don't know I'm not a real cowboy. So when uh-huh. I go to podcast conferences, I wear cowboy hats because they think I'm a cowboy, but I I'm not a real like a cowboy. Poser. So I can't actually wear them like to Wisa or anything, you know. You're I, like, they're like, oh, you ride? You're like, well, I have a pony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a poser. You're more of a poser than me. So we can be posers <laughs> together. Well, I want to hear all about the movie and what happened in the movie and what you thought of the movie. But first, I, you've heard about worm, worm flooring. Jamie had her trailer done. A lot of you are looking at having your trailer floors done with worm flooring, but you can get your barn done too. It's easier to keep clean and safe than traditional flooring. A worm flooring is a durable, non-slip flooring solution that is perfect for barns of all sizes. It's impervious to liquids and eliminates the need for rubber mats. Wouldn't that be nice? Worm flooring is also easy to clean, so you can spend less time cleaning and more time enjoying your horses. Worm flooring is the perfect solution for barn stalls, wash racks, aisleways, clipping rooms, cattle chutes, and more. It can be installed on concrete, wood, aluminum, steel, or pretty much any other permanent surface. It's well, awesome. Worm flooring is also backed by a two-year warranty, so you can be sure that it will last for years to come. Visit wormflooring.com today and learn more about how worm flooring can make your barn a better and safer place for you and your animals. And it's W-E-R-M for We Eliminate Rubber Mats. Thank you. All right. So the Cowboy and the Queen, the documentary itself. Tell us about it. Oh, my gosh. Okay, where they got this footage, there was research teams just going crazy. Uh, I mean, they got footage of Monty's dad, like doing horse stuff. They have footage of the Queen and Monty. They have footage of the Queen as a child. They have like they took 
pieces of her Christmas dresses and put it in. It is edited so beautifully. And the t- so basically it starts with Monty's life and kind of makes its way through like talking about the war and talking about the, you know, after, after uh, Pearl Harbor and stuff. And then it kind of takes the queen's life and you can see a connection and why these two people had such a great so connection. So it kind of mirrors the two till they meet? Yeah, pretty much. But it talks about like her early trainers with horses and his early training with horses and kind of how they both bucked the system where his dad was very violent with horses. He even wrote a book about training horses and they show you how to tie the knot to tie the ropes up and everything. And then uh, the way that she was raised with horses and then that she had a, an instructor that when she was young was like, find the kindness in the horses and uh, just really beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful. There was not, and and it's not like supposed to be a tearjerker, but there was not a dang dry eye in the house, including Monty. He was really affected, but it goes through basically up until, you know, today they shot this at the most of it, you know, the, the live stuff at the, the last movement from two years ago. So they've been editing and working on getting this thing out for a couple of years. Um, so COVID hit and they had to slow down the production and all that, but they got it together and got it out. And it is, it's fantastic. Did they I have watched to have it. the Royal family approve it or did they, I see don't it? Do you know? know. I don't know how they got this stuff because the, the, the lady who is a biographer for Queen Elizabeth who wrote a book on her, Queen Elizabeth did not do interviews. So she got permission to write a book and she is in the movie as well. So they had to have some permission to do the things that they do and to get the footage that they got. I mean, some of they, they have, you know, Queen Elizabeth as a child riding and Monty riding as a child. I didn't even know they had video back then you know this is like 80 years ago must have been eight millimeter film (laughs) it's it's incredible and then um there's gosh there's this is one thing that i can't wait for karma to come back they talk about traditional horse training and there are some very violent footage scenes of people you know traditionally training horses and tying the leg up and all this and there is a girl who is filming herself, like who probably posted this online, which makes it, Debbie said somehow it's in public domain. And I'm sure this girl does not know that she's in a documentary where they're like, don't do this. She ties the horse's leg up and she's spinning it around the round pen. And she's like, he's a little too sassy for his britches and just shows her, I mean, how people today still behave like this in training horses and how we're trying to change all of that. It is fantastic it is it is so good chad teared up twice he said because he did not know all of the struggles that monty has gone through and i mean he has fought his whole life they taught they showed footage of the documentary of when he gentled shy boy out in the wild and then they brought out shy boy to death i mean i don't want to spoil it but y'all it is so it's like 13 bucks to stream it okay i was gonna ask you can we watch it Yes. And only for, so here's the problem. They don't have distribution yet. Netflix hasn't picked it up. Nobody's uh-huh. picked it up to distribute it. So this is it. If you want to see this documentary and I'm, I'm not really a documentary person, but y'all, this is done so well. And it's about horses. Like, come on. I mean, it's fantastic. So I, I'm, I've shared the link with Glenn. I'll put and- it in the show notes today. Yeah, put it in the show notes. Well, maybe we'll post it on our Horses in the Morning Facebook page because it's worth seeing. And so it's $13. You only have to pay $13. It's, you know, the price of going to one person going to the movies nowadays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 And it's kind of a pain. To, to get it. So I ended up downloading it, uh, like streaming it from my phone. And then I screen mirrored it onto our <laughs> TV. And that's how I was able to watch it. for the, And we're going to do another viewing tonight. I don't know if I have to pay again. I don't care. It's totally worth it. Um, but it's kind of a pain. Like it makes you look like you're buying tickets, but you're not buying tickets. You're, and then the next page comes up is like stream now, you know, and, and it's, it, it's, they don't make it easy. But it's worth it, you guys. Please go watch this film. It's just it's it's just something everybody needs to see. And you can't you can't do all this. They've researched everything and founding tried to find holes and all this. And he is just who he is. He says who he's he says who he is, and he is that, you know, and, and it's just were there people there? I, how many, were there a lot of people there at the screen? Sold out screening. 
Yeah. Were there a lot of people there that aren't horse people? And I was curious, did you get any sense of how they felt about it? I think a lot of them were New York people. So yeah, not a, but I mean, people stood up and cheered. And then afterwards there was a Q and a where Sarah Mazzanieri went up on stage and interviewed Monty oh, really? and Pat. Oh, she's and been they, on our show a hundred times. Yeah, yeah, no, she's, and she's delightful. I got to talk to her for a minute. She's like, oh, you work with Glenn. And I was like, Psh. Glenn works, <laughs> Glenn with, works me. with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, you were just on our show. So she was really sweet. And the director, Andrea Nevins, is amazing. And the guy who did the editing on the film was just incredible. And I'd met him at the movement as well. And they're just great people. And this woman who we're going to have the director on, I'm going to get her on. I talked to her about coming on. Like she's fought cancer while she was filming this, like almost she's an unbelievable woman. And I think it's worth highlighting her as a woman who she, the reason this documentary came up is because she was trying to do a documentary on the queen's corgis. And so oh. she, and she was like, who knows anything about it? And then met Monty and talked to him and was like, mm, I think there's a different story here. Oh, and wow. that's how the whole thing started. So she went so from dogs to horses. Yeah, it's not like they were shopping this around or something. It was like they they were found, and the, the, this story proved to be interesting enough to tell it. And it's just awesome, you guys. I can't say enough about it. So I know I've rambled Yay. on about it. But well, I'm it's glad great. you didn't go all the way to New York, and it was terrible. So <laughs> <laughs> it was embarrassing. No, I mean exactly. Like, wow, I, I'm so glad it came out that well. Very good. Well, let's hear about Cosequin. Uh, why don't you tell us about that? And then we're going to get Nick Larkin on, who's going to tell us about a brand new sport that sounds like it's called cross-country equitation. And it sounds to me like a horse husband's dream. Cut out dressage, just do cross-country and go home. I love this. <laughs> it's an adventure's dream, too. <laughs> Cosequin ASU joint and hoof pellets contain quality ingredients to support joint and hoof health and leave out the fillers, molasses, and alfalfa, all while delivering the taste horses love. The color of our ingredients shine through for the difference you can see. Visit CosequinEquine.com. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to bring to the show Nick Larkin. Nick, my old coach from Kentucky. And uh, hi, buddy. How's it going? Uh, it's good. It's good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Before we get started talking, I have to tell you something. So Nick and I, when I lived in Kentucky, my brother and I got four tickets to go see you two in Atlanta. And so Nick and his wife took two tickets and my brother and I took the other two and we went and saw you two together in Atlanta. Now, Nick, have you heard or seen or been to Vegas to see you two in the sphere. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, I, I do sort of know what you're talking about because, um, yeah, I've read a little bit about that, but no, I haven't. <laughs> I've never been to Las Vegas. You know, it's oh not my. on my... It's not on my bucket list, but then maybe with you too, maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So Nick is I, a huge fan as well. And uh, I went two weeks ago with my brother to Vegas to see him and just YouTube it, Google it, do whatever you can to see. It's a sphere and it's like Bono yeah. and the edge and, and, and Larry's not there, but it is unbelievable to be uh, inside this sphere and just the technology everywhere. And the yeah. show. It's incredible. So I definitely recommend that that's what you get for Christmas, ask for tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be nice. That would be nice. Yeah, because I was the, um, you know, I figure every every school there's some guy that's like like crazy into U2. I was the guy that was like drawing U2 on everything and <laughs> it knew, it knew all of the, all of the, you know, the trivia and stuff. So Yeah, this is unbelievable. I definitely think you need to go. When I was there, I was like, oh, my God, Nick would love this. Yeah, it is like, yeah surrounding you it's unbelievable and, and yeah. they played some great songs so you'll love it but hey what you're actually here to talk about is not youtube concert it is about cross-country equestrian tell us about it okay so it's a it's a brand new sport um based around uh you know jumping a course of cross-country jumps um scoring points um, the, the, the two things that sort of set it apart from anything else is that you, you score points for jumping the fences. And the other thing is that every single fence is optional. So you can kind of pick and choose what you want to jump. So it, um, on, on one end of the spectrum, you can see it being really a hard competition where, I mean, hard edged competition where somebody is really trying to rack up some points. And on the other end, you've got 
somebody that's going around going, you know, my horse hates trichanas or I'm worried about this jump. And it's just like, well, you can keep going. You just pass it. You just don't score any points. Just pass it and go on to the next one. So it's you you're calling it cross country equitation, and so it's at like there's no, no address. Yet. <laughs> so 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 we were we were oh, calling it Jesus. cross country equitation. I just pictured yeah, judges yeah. out there in jackets and no, hunter I, I know. classes, and that's what I picture. Yeah, yeah, so 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 yeah, equitation has the colloquial meaning here. I I kind of, I I mean, I struggled with this right at the right at the beginning, and and I was hoping that people could get past that whole thing. Um, but you Here know, in because America, we can't the, get past the hunter yeah, phase. No, I know, yeah. I know, I know. So, so, so we're now calling it. Sounds a little awkward, but we're now calling it cross country equestrian competitions. So, you know, whatever it is, it's just a name at the at the end of it. I, I didn't want to do something sort of gimmicky, like you know, cross country X or extreme this or whatever like that. But it, I mean, cross country equitation describes what it is if you don't use that colloquial meaning. You know, it's of, it's riding having, a horse across yeah, country. Shirt tails, yeah. Shirt tails tucked yeah. in and being judged yeah. under tack. Yeah. I, I, you know, I just I, I kind of thought that people would think, um, well, how practical is it to have a, a, a you know, a show hunter judge on each fence out there? <laughs> you, yeah. you know, um, yeah, probably not going to happen. But no, it's so it's it's completely objectively scored. Um, that was that was one of the goals from the from the from the outset. So is it like different levels, much like a regular cross country of beginner, novice, novice, or is it like from beginner, novice, all the way up through, you know, prelim jumps out there and you can pick and choose? It's more the former. Um, so I, I have them level one through 10. Like everything I've done is sort of structured to make it simple and easy to understand and flexible and easy to adjust and adapt. Um, so, you know, like level one is below the equivalent of starter level. And then level 10 would be sort of championship eventing level. Um, and, and no, you have your course. So if you're, say, competing at level four, um, which would be, what is that, like training level, um, roughly the equivalent of training level, um, your course would be predominantly um, level four jumps. But there's some percentages as far as, then I haven't explained this to you guys, but but the um, so there's the, there's regular fences which would be like level four on that particular course, and then there's some challenge fences. There's like a small percentage of the jumps are challenge fences, and they're just typically going to be the level higher, whether it's dimensions or technicality or what whatever the question is is just a little bit tougher. Those score more points than a regular fence. Um, and then there's also, just while I'm on that too, there's also some knockdown fences, which is, you know, think of a show jumping um, fence, except for in a cross country situation, we need, I, I'm refer, using the term um, captive element. So kind of think of a, a pole on top of a fence, except for it, it can only move like a few inches. You displace it and, um, and you incur penalties for that, but you'll actually still Get the penalty, get the points for jumping the fence, but you'll incur the penalties for dislodging the the obstacle. Ultimately, actually, I want to use some. In some cases, I want to use some sensors. So you know, th th this won't happen. But my my idea is, yeah, the, the horse tips the tips the touches the fence, and you know, lights and sirens and smoke machines go off. <laughs> I love that. that makes it great for the audience. I, I am kidding about that, but it, but that actually <laughs> extends back to when I was building some cross country jumps. There were some big gas these sort of like, I don't know what they were made of, but big gas pipelines. And I wanted to build this fence that was on fire. Um, it was <laughs> simulated on fire. The TD wouldn't go with it. But anyway. No, yeah, no. So, you know, yeah. last Neither with the I... insurance company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was basically smoke machines, a strobe light and some cellophane. So, you know, but. <laughs> well, aside from that part, the last time I saw you was at the Thoroughbred Makeover and you were the show jump judge. And part of your idea sounds like a lot of what we dealt with on the cross country course, which was there's some fences where you could jump and get extra points. And like, like say going through the water was your, your jump, but then they also had a jump going into the water and then a jump coming out of the water and you could double up on points that way. Of course I was not 
doing those, I was just struggling to get in the water. <laughs> but yeah. I love that kind of idea of like, you know, your horse, you know, your riding and you know what you can challenge yourself with. And if you struggle with it, then just go past it and come school it later. I love that. idea. Yeah, it, it, exactly. I mean, you know, every other jumping based equestrian sport is, is jump the fence or go home. And, um, and y- y- you know, that, that can, people are going to have bad dressage tests because they're worrying about some fence that's on the cross country course, you know? It, mm-hmm. And so it, it wants to, like I said, at the, at the start, you know, you've got, you can be really competitive and on the other end, you can, you could literally canter around a CCE course, not jump a single thing. And that's kind of the idea is that some people will do that and then they'll start going, you know what, I'm going to jump that log. And, and they go ahead and pop that log. And, you know, a few shows later, they're, they're jumping half the jumps on the course. And before you know it, they're, they're really into it. So you've had some of these already? Yeah, we've, we've run two what I call workshops. So they were sort of um, proof of concept test competitions. And um, we ran one out um, at Skylight Farm and um, outside of Louisville. And then we w- ran one at the October 1st horse trials at the, at the Kentucky Horse Park. And um, neither one had great weather, um, but they, you know, they were they were sort of small affairs, which was nice because I could concentrate and talk and 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 you know get feedback from people. But they were wildly popular. Everybody sort of left going, "This is so cool." I mean, we actually have some diehard fans already. That's like, "This is my jam," and well, you um, know, this is all I want to do. Nick, I love this because you have so many. I mean, with eventing becoming a dressage competition in many cases, you know, yeah. it gives those an opportunity. Those horses who are never going to be great at dressage, right? Um, it yeah, gives them an opportunity. Yeah. But they're great at jumping and going fast. Yeah, yeah, it, it, exactly. I mean, this, this, honestly, this stems all the way back to 25 plus years ago when eventing was talking about changing and and I agreed that it sort of needed to change but it went in kind of a polar opposite direction where I would have steered it and you know I, I had discussions I, I mean it, it's been a long time in the making this because I, you know I, I would talk to people and ask questions and sort of get their viewpoints and so forth and and what I was concerned about with the proposed changes in eventing was that it was going to turn into a dressage competition competition it was probably going to select heavily towards warm bloods the cross country was going to get weaker and weaker um and then you know when when you're talking about something like movement or jumping scope uh, you, you know every now and then somebody can just stumble across it but generally it's going to be something that you buy and um and and so now so many of the sports are just like if you can afford to play if you can afford to buy that sort of horsepower then, then you're good. And I'm, I'm like, well, that's not really a competition. <laughs> well, it's, it's not a sporting competition. It's something right. different. So, yeah, so anybody who, so, so, so those of us who get off the track thoroughbreds and bring them up, we can kind of showcase their skills. If, and sometimes, you know, dressage takes years, but popping a horse over logs and getting them brave on a cross country does not take as long. So this seems like something you could, because training a horse for a three day event, or a horse trial is you have to have a horse that is is ready in all three disciplines. And this kind of gives you the option to just focus on the one and get get out there and get going. I love it. Well, yeah, y- yes and no, because, you know, back in the day, if you will, the, the, the dressage was less. um you know, less influential on on the outcome of of the of the event, and the cross country was obviously a lot more um, dressage is more, and 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 now cross country is is far less as far as you know that eleven and a half minute track um, at and that's five star level or what they call five star level now. It used, I mean, I've done what now is called four star level tracks um, back in the day that were 14 and a half minutes long. And that was a mm-hmm. D after an, an hour and a half of other stuff before mm-hmm. that. And, and, but, you know, rather than <laughs> you, you want the dressage to, to be building a, a horse that's responsive and adjustable and, you, you know, can, is, is athletically capable of doing things. Whereas now it's just like how fancy is that horse? Yeah. And and um and and that that actually doesn't make for a good cross country horse. You've you, you know you've a, a fancy. I mean, if you go back to the the history of it, you know, as far as eventing coming out of military and cavalry and everything. I mean, 
just to be sort of a bit rude about it, the the, the warm bloods were pulling the cannons and the you know the wagons with the ammunition or it's whatever. True, though. You know, yeah, and and it was the and it, and it was the fast, speedy, agile, like really sharp, sharp horses that were that were doing the 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 fighting and so forth. I'm you know I'm not talking about suits of armors and everything like that, but it's like if you had a I use it's a bit of a dark joke, but I, I think if you had a, a, a you know a warm blood coming out there prancing around going look at my amazing movement and it's like I've, I've sort of said yeah they they attract a lot of attention and they would have attracted the first musket ball too because <laughs> you know so, that, that jumping a, you know it's it's a, it's a bit harsh but it's like no I want that horse that's like got its head on a swivel and is like you know we've got an objective here not this look at me look at me look how wonderful i am i'm not really fast i'm not really agile i'm not really whatever but anyway sorry <laughs> yeah no no i get it i mean they all still have to go out there and do it but yeah it's definitely this kind of levels the playing field and and it's just, it just sounds really really fun so how can yeah. people get connected or involved in in the concept and even join one um so we have our website cross country equestrianassociation.com and um, people can get hold of us through that. Um, we're we're currently talking to organisers. Yeah, we, we, we sort of have a little bit of a chicken or the egg issue right now. We've got competitors saying, I'm really interested and organisers that are kind of like, huh, okay. Um, and and we, we need those early adopter type of organisers to come out and say, yeah, I'll, I'll put something on and, um, and get the competitors, um, you know, give something for the competitors to do and it's sort of you know both want to know that it's going to work the competitors want to know that there's going to be shows and and um the organizers want to know that competitors are coming up well nick if you get down here this winter to a cal and do it at the florida horse park which is where i can see this happening um, yes yeah definitely let me know i live about three miles from there we'll support you and i'll come on over yeah no i mean our focus is definitely shifting south now for for the winter months and and i've talked to a few organizers down in the in the ocala area um we're also sort of like trying to connect with people out on the west coast that might have you know those areas that have a bit of an extended season um and you know and we're doing we're doing everything we can to make it easy um you know like effectively from an organizer's point of view we'll come in for essentially free and we will help set up the course, the design, um, you know, run this workshop. The, the idea of a workshop is it's a, it's a simplified sort of competition. Everybody learns about it's part education, part part um, competition, and, and everybody learns the basic concepts. And not just the, the competitors, but the officials and the, um, the organizers and everything. And, and any organizer that's done, you know, that's run some shows before is going to go, oh, yeah, I got it. You know, there's there, there's some details to to be fleshed out later on, but fundamentally they they should be able to do it. The idea being that we we do these things, people go, okay, I get the sport, I can run the sport, whatever, um, and and then you know one or two of those, and they're up running their own what we're calling training rules shows, which is sort of like schooling shows. Um, they're less education, more competition, but they still have a lot of extra flexibility in it. And then eventually that'll transition into, for some of them, will transition into accredited shows. All right. But Cross, yeah, I mean, co- sorry, the website is crosscountryequestrianassociation.com. You can go there, yes. you can find out more. We'll put a link to that in our show notes so everybody can just go scroll down and click on that and it'll take you to it. Yeah, yeah. And, and competitors themselves, if they talk to their local, organizers and and just get get them to understand hey there's people that will show up and and come to it you know yeah. i i understand that there's a lot of people that are um you know they, they're already starting to figure out their season and anybody that say mid-level up levels whatever they're, they're already sort of committed to a certain path but this is more for at least now it's it's going to attract those people that are sort of feeling maybe a little left out by a lot of the equestrian sports. They don't have the right type of horse or they don't have the budget to be spending so much to go and compete or they don't have, you know, the right equipment or, or whatever, that, that, that sort of stuff. Um, one so, question, can you do more than one run or is it one and done? 
Um, no, you can. And so, so there's actually, yeah, <laughs> it, it sort of depends. Um, you know, obviously higher levels and th- there's, th- there's two sort of principal phases to it or stages as I'm calling them. One's the cross country ride, which is a lot like a cross country course. And then the other one is a, is a jump off ride, um, which is sort of a, a it, it'll, Part of it is in an arena setting and can actually use show jumping, show jump jumps. And an arena doesn't need to be footing. It can just be a demarcated area on the grass. And then part of it is out on the cross country. And there's several other, like I've introduced a small portion of the whole concept because <laughs> I don't want to like bombard and confuse everybody. But um, there's there's like a bunch more to come and to build on this. And, it, and it, just going back to your comment um, earlier about, you know, the thoroughbreds and everything, this all, this will select towards the thoroughbred. I mean, that was, again, one of the goals of it. It, it, it selects to that all-round horse that's also got a bunch of speed and some, and, and like, considerable stamina, um, you know, on top of the athletic ability um, of, of being able to jump. So, so it's a – you know, an off-track thoroughbred's a lot cheaper than a um, than an imported warm blood. And you don't um, say. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And 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 I mean, you know, on a completely other side of it, it's it's when when the cost or when the the restriction to access is basically how much you can spend. Um, like I was saying, it's not much of a competition, but it also tends to it's degrading horsemanship across across everything you know it's like i've i've not just talked to eventing people but dressage people hunter jump people western people and the, and you know one of the things that you'll hear quite commonly is like you know what the, the standard of horsemanship isn't there and it's like well because people that can do the work are um you know can't afford to play the game and mm-hmm. and 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 their horses are getting bought by the people that can do it and that's a generalization i i accept that but generally speaking it, it, it's quite true um, and it's, it's degrading, declining horsemanship. And, you know, it's sort of like people don't know how really to get a horse super fit here and they don't, they don't know how to ride um, a, a, a specific horse or that individual horse because they haven't spent enough time. They just, you know, somebody brought it along and then they bought it and then now they compete it. And, it, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> well, you're, I'm trying you're to doing, fix, fix you're all doing these something. problems at once. I know but you're doing awesome. I was telling Glenn, I'm like, Nick's a big idea guy. And I must tell you that if anybody's looking for a coach, uh, I still in my brain when I'm out riding, I still hear your voice in my head telling me specific things like, what? Yes. Just j- j- jump it. I don't care. From a standstill, jump it. Get over it. You know, like, I still hear it. Damn it, Jamie. Damn it, Jamie. Yeah, Jamie. <laughs> yeah there, there are some caveats around that sort of <laughs> sort of approach. But it's, you know. But, no, I learned yeah. so much from you, and I think this is going to be great and teach a lot of people, and I'm really excited for it. I wish you the best of luck. Cross Country Equestrian Association dot com. Nick Larkin, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Have thank a good you. holiday. You too. Wow, he's very excited. This is so cool. You know, we always say that, you know, we always say on this show, we love when people innovate and do something different. You know, and he's so passionate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm passionate, excited. And you're right. Like some of those that want to be competitive can't afford the imported warm blood. And so this gives those other people a chance to get a blue ribbon every now and then. I mean, geez, some of us just want a blue <laughs> ribbon. I mean, I'm not, I don't know any of those people, but it's fine. Whatever. <laughs> What'll help your warm blood or your thoroughbred or whatever horse you have is Purina Animal Nutrition. With three Ooh, research. Good segue. That like was that? awesome. Well yeah. done. Go ahead. <laughs> With three research. <laughs> Research-backed ration balancers to fill nutritional gaps in your horse's diet. Enrich Plus delivers a concentrated source of protein, vitamins, and minerals without unnecessary calories. Enrich Plus Senior features Active Age prebiotic technology and Outlast supplement for aging for aging easy keepers. Omega Match is rich in omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin E, great for horses without ex- access to green grass. Find a ration balancer for your horse at Pure. PurinaMills.com slash ration balancers or visit your local feed store today. That's PurinaMills.com slash ration balancers. Coming up next, we have this. It's time for the weekly look at your equestrian first world problems. This ought to be good. 
Yes, if you remember, this is these are equestrian first world problems. These are real challenges that our listeners are going through every day. And it's so tough. And so, you know, it needs to be cathartic. And so they need to release these problems. And so what I do is I post something on the Horse Radio Network Auditor's Facebook page on Sunday. And I ask people to share with us what is happening. Release the demons that you're facing and uh, they do. And so, um, Glenn, if people want to become involved in this and become an auditor, how do they do that? Just go to horses in the morning.com, click on the auditor banner on the right side of the page. And for as little as $3 a month, it's kind of a donation to the hosts here at the network and also to help support, keep us running and for you to be involved in the coolest group on the internet. Just do that. Go to horses in the morning.com. All right. Well, Jillian, um, I love when people include pictures and she included a picture of the cutest little fluff ball puppy. It looks like some sort of golden doodle or something or poodle. I don't know. It's so cute. And her problem is um, I got a new puppy. And now I don't have as much time to ride. And that's the thing. Like, puppies are all, it's like having a baby. That's why know? we get adult greyhounds and adopt them <laughs> out. Because I don't have to deal with that puppy face. Uh, Robin, oh, this is, so Robin Donahue is our resident. She owns a carriage company and has a beautiful white percherons that she does carriage jobs with and uh, weddings and all sorts of things. And she says, it's raining and I have gray horses. And I have 16 carriage jobs in the first two weeks of December. Girls been raining here, too. I mean, there's no way to keep anything clean at all. Like, hey, Robin, you're the one that accepted 16 carriage jobs in the first two weeks. <laughs> I'm just saying, you did this saying. to yourself. Yeah. Flossie says, I got some new cute airplane themed ribbon and I want to make my horse an aviation themed saddle pad. Oh, I want one of those. She says, but I already have like five pads for my one horse. <laughs> and I mean, what went through my brain was like, it's only five. Like, yeah, come that on. seems like not nearly enough. I mean, let's get up those numbers a little bit. Yeah, Seriously. Geez, you're a slacker. Ellen says, I'm so grateful for the availability and quality of equine vets in my area. Since my horse needed emergency surgery after she was playing with the mean girl in the paddock. Uh. But the problem is the mean girl is also mine. <laughs> so I can't be mad at anyone. <laughs> 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 so here's the thing I was thinking of uh, the other day. I talked the about girl how never gets hurt, do they? No, yeah. th that's the thing is I was talking about how I have my mares in one field and geldings in another field, and I got a lot of pushback from that, Glenn. A lot of people going, "Why yeah, wouldn't I was you just surprised. turn them off?" We always did that too. I didn't get why people were so upset at you. Do you know why I do it? This is why. <laughs> yeah, but we have two boys and they're picking on each other and hurting each other all the time. So I don't know. Yeah, throw, in, throw a mare in the mix and then yeah, they compete. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Especially so, with Scooter in there. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. I think I have just too many horses that really love mares. And then, you know, unfortunately, three weeks a month, they don't love big boys. So, mm. uh, yeah, it's, mm. that's why I do that. I, do, I, I, I was surprised, though, because we did the same thing. We never put them together. And I, I just thought that was was the way everybody did it until you said that and we got all the comments. I can't believe, yeah, I was a little surprised. I was like, I need to go on and talk about why I keep them separate because it did make it sound like in the comments that you were the only one in the world that did it. And I, I know I was like, no, we did it that way too. I know I felt, I felt shamed. I mean, that's fine. Whatever. All of you coming that's after part me. Of our job. It's <laughs> uh, Carrie says my five-year-old horse has the best temperament. And it's so good that my boyfriend was so helpful in pointing out that if he ever develops any problems, at least you'll know they're your fault. <laughs> Thanks, boyfriend. <laughs> so it's so perfect. If he goes bad, it's your fault. You screwed have, him up. I have this list I've been saving for the next Horse Husbands episode. It's 18 things you never say to a woman. I need to add that one to the list. Add it's it's your one. fault. Yeah, I need it's to add that one. your yeah. fault. Um, Janelle says, I've been shopping. Was it shopping. a boyfriend or a husband? Did she say? Boyfriend. Mm. Boyfriend. Yeah, he Move won't on. be around long. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> Unless he's paying for the five-year-old, then you can keep oh, him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Janelle says, shopping with some of my new auditor BFFs at a conf consignment sale yesterday, and I scooped up a brand new pair of back-on-track polos for less than half of retail. 
But it's too hot for my horse to use mm. them. I was just going to say, and they are not going as a gift to their fellow auditors at Christmas. No, no. no. And, you know, I have the back They're on track expensive. blanket. Yeah. And I have the blanket and I love it, but I can only use it like four months a year because it really heats them up. Yeah. You know, really it gets some good too. blood going. Um, Matt, ha- we've been chronicling Matt's uh, bobcat purchase nightmares. Like he yes. had one, but he was out of yes. town and it got sold and then they'd ship in another one. And this is just current problem with buying a bobcat the dealership got in a bobcat with everything off my wants and needs list but the stereo isn't bluetooth so now i have to buy an adapter to plug in the aux port like a peasant so i can listen to podcasts and plus the (laughs) heater works too well and i was hot when it was 28 degrees out (laughs) what's wrong with men that's a first world problem right there oh my god Hey, I'm sorry, are you I gotta in a tell you, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos with, with these couples that build the houses and stuff and farms. And some of them have bobcats. They do look like a handy little beast, bobcat. Mm-hmm. They do look yeah. handy. Yeah. So, I, Matt, pretty cool. I, get, I get why you bought a bobcat. Ariel says, the new barn owner at the boarding barn my horse is at let me ride in her dressage saddle and even said I could buy it if I like it. But now I like it, and I can't afford it. Isn't that how they sucker you in? (laughs) Right? (laughs) Hey, just lease this perfect horse for a few months. It'll be fun. Here, try the saddle. Oh, Uh and I'm selling it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, it's for sale. She's totally For 10 times more than the horse. (laughs) Uh, Emily says, I can't decide what to get the the new HR and holiday picture on just to add to my collection. There's too many options. And she's got a picture of, like, Two years ago, and then three years ago, the the art so oh, yeah. uh, so sweet. I got mine in, uh, so the mug looks fantastic. I got one of the tall mugs because I like really big mugs with big handles, and it looks mm-hmm. fantastic with our art on it with Miles and Nigel and and Scooter. It looks great, and then we also got cards and also the Christmas ornaments. So now I have a Christmas ornament with every one of the one of the ones we've done. Yeah, I got the Christmas ornament, and then I got a Geldash mug. Did you get the Christmas ornament in? I did. Yeah, okay. No, I haven't gotten that no, yet. No, I haven't either. I, that, I'm I got still waiting mug, on though. that. I got the mug, though. Uh, looks fantastic. And if you guys want to do that, just go to horseradionetwork.com and click on gifts and the tabs at the upper right, and that'll link you to where you can buy them. Yeah, you my cool Christmas horsey stuff. Uh, Jen says, I was so excited about listening to Radiothon live this year. But it's the same day we're flying to Florida to go to Disney World. Oh, well, oh postpone my. that trip. You you got to get your priorities right. Well, no, I could think you a lot of airplanes have internet now. You can watch it on the plane. You pay the four ninety nine yeah. and watch it on the plane. Well, worth it. Um, here's the thing. Uh, I, I was thinking of the time she's going to Disney World. You're gonna you're gonna ride well, two rides. Mm, you know she'll be okay the week after Thanksgiving. That's pretty quiet between oh, Thanksgiving and New- Thanksgiving and Christmas. Pretty quiet, but you don't want to go the week of Thanksgiving or the week of Christmas. Oh, I see. I would have got that wrong. Mm. I th- and the week after Christmas is crazy, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kelly says there's so many Black Friday sales happening on saddle pads, and I really want to get more, but I have like 40 saddle pads and no horses to ride. <laughs> Okay, those are the numbers we were talking about, Flossie. That's yeah. what we want. Yeah, that's that's the numbers we want to see. And if you need some, she probably has some she could spare. Yeah, exactly. I do want an aviation themed pad though. That'd be awesome. Yeah, you can, if you need J- Jamie's address for that after you make it, let me know. I'll you see. can make it, and then I'll take it off your hands since you have too many pads. Uh, Mary says I got a new truck, and it has literally everything. But the phone charger is intermittent. Like, I guess it's one of those things you like lay the phone on and it charges it, you know? Uh And she's like, but the phone charger is intermittent. So I have to plug my phone in. (laughs) I've never tried one of those with any of my phones. My phone, uh, my car has it. My new car has it. But it kind of heats up the phone. Kind of freaks me out. Oh, yeah. Um, Liz says, just when my horse was going so good, I've, oh. I really like, okay, write this down. Liz needs to come on and tell this story because this is something we have to hear because she is that girl. Get the, that girl sound ready, Glenn. Just when my horse was going so well, I fell off on Halloween, ended up at the ER 
and ended up going home in an Uber at 5 a.m. with no bra and no <laughs> shirt, wearing my breeches, field blue boots, wrapped in a white blanket. <laughs> I don't want to be that girl. your boots and breeches okay. with no this shirt didn't on? happen without pictures <laughs> there i need more information were you wearing a costume or did you like receive like a puncture wound and they had to cut your shirt off and why would they not support i give you like a scrub top or something oh my god this That's has got to be the best funny. story it's not funny but yeah. it's so funny because she posted about it here so clearly she's got a good sense of humor <laughs> Um, let's take two more. Charlotte says there are so many great sales right now, but I don't need anything. And I'm supposed to be saving money for a horse. <laughs> we got well, to see to- Charlotte, uh, two weeks ago. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. We got to get together. She was in town for her two minutes in Ocala now, and, uh, we got to see her. She's still horse shopping. Uh, and she went to Europe to horse shop, and then, uh, you know, with her with her disability, she has to be very picky about the horses and the kind of uh, cues they take, and mm-hmm. what she can give. So it takes a while to find a gr- you know Grand Prix level dressage horse that uh, that she can ride. So, but she's she I think she's getting closer. So hopefully she finds Good. one soon. Good. Um, and then our last one is Jessica. She says, I moved to a new barn and it's a really nice one. Too nice. Everyone here tucks in their shirts and wears belts. And I feel so feral with my untucked shirt <laughs> horse with a mane that needs pulling and scruff under his chin that needs trimming. And my breeches don't even have belt loops. So like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for sending your real serious problems. Those are the kinds we like. I've I've been to that barn. I remember the first barn. I was like, wait, you have to wear boots and breeches here? Like, you can't wear chaps and jeans? <laughs> Get you. I, I feel you, girl. Jennifer's worn breeches in forever. It's just half chaps. It's always half oh, chaps. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's it for today. We're not going to be doing a post show because uh, Jamie and I have another interview to do for Radiothon here shortly. So we got we got to get ready for that. We got to get all Christmassy for that. And then uh, don't forget, Radiothon's this Sunday, 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Just go to the Horses in the Morning of the Horse Radio Network Facebook page. For auditors, we will be streaming it to the auditor room as well. Uh, and because they're all connected, we have one big long chat right under the video this time. So everybody can chat together and share Everybody their can stories. shame me for separating my mares and geldings. <laughs> and we will have a show. Tomorrow is the Chi University episode. And then Jamie and I will be back on Wednesday. And then that's it for this week. Because for, for, for the uh, foreign listeners out there that are outside the United States, we have Thanksgiving on Thursday and Black Friday on Friday. So we will not be here Thursday and Friday back again. Again on Sunday. If you can't catch it live, like if you're flying on an airplane, you can't catch Radiothon live, we are putting out the audio version, and you can always watch a video later, but we are putting out the audio version on the Horses in the Morning feed, the one you're listening to now. So all hours will be broken out and put on that feed, so you can listen to it uh, the day after. It'll be up. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. Appreciate it. Good to talk to you again, Jamie. I'm glad you had fun in New York. Thank you. Good talk to you, too. I'm done traveling for a bit. Um...